All right, so yesterday at uh, 3 in the morning, I finished building the machine and I did a quick cut and put a YouTube video out. Um, I can't do any more cuts with the X20 Pro because I think uh, it's just kicking up too much uh, smoke. It can work so fast that, you know, it burns a lot of material, so um, I need an enclosure. But before I can build one, I think I want to start using it, so um, I am going to attempt to replace my um, Atomstack A5. This is the standard cheap version. You can get it for about 150 quid. Perfect for engraving, but for cutting, it has its limitation. So I'm going to take that out and um, attempt to just put the Atomstack X20 Pro. They do look like the same footprint. I did kind of do a rough measure. So apart from the display in the front, it should go, uh, it should slot straight in. Okay, so this machine coming out. When I designed the box, I did make it such a way that the machine can just slide in and out, so nothing is fixed. My next design will be just a hood. Almost. So it does go in. So now the X20 Pro is in there. There is still room to move sideways and front and back. The only thing is, like I say, the display unit cleverly have a wire extended. So there's no way putting it there because I can't see that anymore. So I'll probably have it outside, like here maybe. But I won't modify the box too much because I think this box will belong to the A5. So I will uh, create another one for the X20, just the hood. Okay, so this is my failed attempt. Well, I won't say completely failed, but you can see that, you know, my power image is there on the glass, but instead of etching it on the front of the glass, it actually burns the back because I have some glue stick, kind of a translucent surface on the back. 10%, um, nothing happened throughout all the speed. And then from 30% onwards, you start to get some kind of an engraving. So it has finished engraving, and you can see that 10% uh, they um, kind of uh, clean off the paint, but not really engrave. But here I can see that it's silver engraving, and the higher power is start to chip the glass. So I would say this one here, 800, probably give you a bit more uh, shadow effect. So the contrast, why I would say 800 at 30% will be a good starting point. So here is my little test today. So a few successful, a few not so successful. For example, um, the 3 mil pie wood, which is the most commonly used by me. Uh, I can see that, you know, it's very clear that where the where the first show is. So I can do like um, slow and low burn, or I can do a fast and high burn. So I can choose any of these if I want to cut like shapes out. Uh, in terms of engraving, 
it's a bit strange because like with the air assist i find that there is actually a lot more dust but i haven't prepped this uh three mil pie wood so i, I guess will be anything between 20 10 to 20 percent maybe 30 if it is really high speed but you can see that um, at a higher higher um, power output, it actually burns through. I actually have to stop the um, test because any more than this, not just good light it's on fire. Um, slate, I got very good results with slate. So this one, I haven't prepared a surface at all. And uh, very high temperature, it actually causes it to turn into glass. But um, at lower 10%, I think it's very usable. Um, 30% is start to um, causing some rugged surfaces but I guess anything along the 10% will be a uh, very good picture quality if I want to print something on slate glass now this is ordinary glass and um, at first what I did was um, I didn't clean the back of the glass where there was glue sticks so this is my uh, 3d printing glass uh, which is spare as you can see, it actually engraved on the rear side of the glass. So in the future, if I want something that they can't touch, but I want to engrave the back, as long as it's not too thick, I can use that method. So I can prepare the surface at the back of the glass and then just use the X20 Pro to engrave. Now 10% doesn't give me anything at all. So it has to be from a 30% power onwards. Um, this side here, I didn't completely clean it off, so I spray it with um, black, black spray paint and then I turn to do the test. As you can see, 10% here you got from starting to nothing and then from 30% onwards you can get a full square with a bit of gradient. Anything on 70%, everything become kind of blown out and 90% actually cause a bit of a a rugged surface here. Now on to some now on to some uh, thicker material. So I have um, six mil MDF here. I attempt to cut it twice, a slow burn and uh, less pass and a um, fast speed but uh, faster speed but um, same power. Uh, you can see not much luck going through this 6 mil MDF before before it start to burn. Um, this one here is a uh, 12 12 mil 12.5 mil MDF. As you can see, um, it start to burn through because it's too much energy in the wood. This is with the air assist. And then I've got 18 mil pie here, similar um, story here. For the first like um, six passes, it kind of cut very clean, but then after I went halfway through, the heat start to build up inside, and then the air assist kind of like you know burn through the wood. So um, yeah, not much luck with a thicker material. Now I don't have anything in between, like uh, between the three mil pie and the six mil and the twelve mil. Uh, I don't have anything kind of in between those two, but I guess um, six mil will be okay. Eight mil will be fine as well. But anything more than eight mil, I don't think this uh, laser is designed for. Um, yeah, this is this is just my second day having um, the machine. Obviously, three mil pie is what I use the most, and it has no problem cutting them whatsoever. So this is just a quick test for now.